Hello, beautiful souls. I have a reading, a poem I want to share with you today to inspire you to tap into your inner strength. Every time I share this reading, and I have shared it, hi, Trisha, I have shared it a lot over my years of teaching and workshops and classes and um, interacting with people. Every time I read it, it settles into a deeper place within me. And so I'm reading it again, and I'm allowing it to settle in more deeply with myself. And I hope that it will impact you as well with the desire that we need to recognize that as intense as these times are and as deeply distressing and saddening as a lot of the events, global events that are happening around us are, we were in fact made for these times. We can transcend. So. This is by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. You can find this poem um, online. That's where I got it. And it is called, We Were Made for These Times. I'm gonna read it to you. My friends, do not lose heart. We were made for these times. I have heard from so many recently who are deeply and properly bewildered. They are concerned about the state of affairs in our world now. Ours is a time of almost daily astonishment and often righteous rage over the latest degradations of what matters most to civilized visionary people. You are right in your assessments. The luster and hubris some have aspired to while endorsing acts so heinous against children, elders, everyday people, the poor, the unguarded, the helpless is breathtaking. Yet I urge you, ask you, gentle you, to please not spend your spirit dry by bewailing these difficult times, especially do not lose hope. Most particularly because the fact is that we were made for these times. Yes, for years we have been learning, practicing, been in training for, and just waiting to meet on this exact plane of engagement. I grew up on the Great Lakes and recognize a seaworthy vessel when I see one. Regarding awakened souls, there have never been more able vessels in the waters than there are right now across the world. And they are fully provisioned and able to signal one another as never before in the history of humankind. Look out over the prow. There are millions of boats of righteous souls on the waters with you. Even though your veneers may shiver from every wave in this stormy royal, I assure you that the long timbers composing your prow and rudder come from a greater forest. That long grained lumber is known to withstand storms, to hold together, to hold its own, and to advance regardless. In any dark time, there is a tendency to veer toward fainting over how much is wrong or unmended in the world. Do not focus on that. There is a tendency too to fall into being weakened by dwelling on what is outside your reach by what cannot yet be. Do not focus there. That is spending the wind without raising the sails. We are needed, that is all we can know. And though we meet resistance, we more so will greet great souls who will hail us, love us and guide us, and we will know them when they appear. Didn't you say you were a believer? Didn't you say you pledged to listen to a voice greater? Didn't you ask for grace? Don't you remember that to be in grace means to submit to a voice greater? Ours is not the task of fixing the entire world at once, 
but of stretching out to mend the part of the world that is within our reach. Any small, calm thing that one soul can do to help another soul, to assist some portion of this poor suffering world, will help immensely. It is not given to us to know which acts or by whom will cause the critical mass to tip toward an enduring good. What is needed for dramatic change is an accumulation of acts, adding, adding to, adding more, continuing. We know that it does not take everyone on earth to bring justice and peace, but only a small, determined group who will not give up during the first, second, or hundredth gale. One of the most calming and powerful actions you can do to intervene in a stormy world is to stand up and show your soul. Soul on deck shines like gold in dark times. The light of the soul throws sparks, can send up flares, builds signal fires, causes proper matters to catch fire. To display the lantern of soul in shadowy times like these, to be fierce and to show mercy toward others, both are acts of immense bravery and greatest necessity. Struggling souls catch light from other souls who are fully lit and willing to show it. If you would help to calm the tumult, this is one of the strongest things you can do. There will always be times when you feel discouraged. I too have felt despair many times in my life, but I do not keep a chair for it. I will not entertain it. It is not allowed to eat from my plate. The reason is this. In my uttermost bones, I know something, as do you. It is that there can be no despair when you remember why you came to earth, who you serve, and who sent you here. The good words we say and the good deeds we do are not ours. They are the words and deeds of the one who brought us here. In that spirit, I hope you will write this on your wall. When a great ship is in harbor and moored, it is safe, there can be no doubt. But that is not what great ships are built for. May you take those words, bring them into your heart, use them to support you in your work here in the world, Use them to support you as you serve yourself, your families, your friends, your community. And I thank you.